course is located in Westfield and we're looking at Echo Lake Country Club, one of the more historical private golf courses outside the New York area. Wow. Cool stuff. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's my kind of bar. <laughs> like this used to go back even more. And it was like back there, there was a room with a poker table. This locker room's impressive. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you got 500 members. Really grateful to get out there and the invite from Nick to play this exclusive but very historical golf course. If there wasn't a hurricane, we were out there. Yeah, it's gonna be a good day. The Donald Ross Echo Lake Country Club playing a private exclusive golf course. Hats off to Nick for getting us out here. Well, then I was just watching a bunch of other videos. And, and I, then you reached out pretty I saw recently. The Instagram, right? Yeah. And I was like, yo, I wonder if this guy would want to play. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with this. Your home course, Nick. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> yeah. So let's take a look at the historical. Cranford Golf Club it was built in 1899. It has changed names since then. A very old country club. His original nine holes was built by William Nutt. Who also designed Shinnecock Hills, another famous golf course. This operated for 13 years, this nine hole course. So look at this way the slit. No way. Yeah, it holds the pencil. Currently, there's three different designers that have touched this golf course, essentially, that's sitting there today. In 1923, there was some property changes. 32 acres was sold to Union County, and that's where the park is located currently today. They sold it to the county from what I read online. I think so. Yeah, so um, I used to go sledding back there as a kid. And the interesting part of that sale with Union County that the golf course was allowed to pump the water from the lake to the golf course here. Oh, that's a great par. Nice, dude. Let's go with the par fester. Right. Funny is, I actually, I got a hole in one on this hole. You know what? It's funny. It was a day just like this. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, <laughs> Nick. That was on camera. Is it? <laughs> right, let me double check. In 1912, there was a purchase of farmland the course you're seeing right now was built. That farm was called Harper Farm. They hired Donald Ross. 1913, Donald Ross completed the course as he was hired to do, 18 holes. Although those are not the full 18 holes that you're seeing today. There's some other golf designers. Holes Let's talk one about it. through five are Donald Ross design. Also eight, 10, 17, and 18. 18, and everyone's in front of you oh, in yeah, that last right. putt. Just a heads up. And there was two other golf designers that participated in helping form the current 18 holes here. In 1990, we saw some changes to the golf course, a longer and better back nine by Bob White. Bob White designed 11 through 16, which I think were the most challenging holes on the golf course. They're extremely long par fours with bunkers throughout it. We're not on them just yet. And in 1928, a new three holes was built by the third golf designer. Remained the same layout for 75 years. So there's still a lot of history still being on these current golf holes today. The course has hosted some events, 12 total. And some of those are the New Jersey Open in 1969, 1970, 85, and 1990. Gotcha. Okay. It's a slight dog leg left, so you can kind of see the hole back. Boxes moved back, probably 30 yards back, and uh, it was like a par five. I wish that was when Reese Jones, because I know Reese yes, Jones. When okay. he redesigned it. No, I can so kind of see it, but. It, it was, uh, this whole thing was a big pond, and there was like fescue around it. Yes, you want to get uh, get some food? Little hot dog hut on the turn here. You're not so good. A Gary Kyle's house. Can I get up in there? Is there someone there? I don't um, want... Yeah, I'm probably... his name is James Kyle. James so, Kyle. And, and we're talking like, I think this was like 1930 or something. I'm gonna look that at And, and they, uh, um, yeah, and he passed away. You know, beloved member, they named the house after him, yeah. It used to just be like sideways. Yeah. And then they kind of added this part. Wow, it's so deceiving. It didn't look like it was that big. <laughs> Now, I don't know if you read this, but on the Wikipedia page, it said that the largest gum tree or largest gum tree. Really? Is yeah, here? it was located here. And I'm assuming they cut it down because it's like you would talk about that if it wasn't here. 
Probably, yeah, that's funny. You know, um, there used to be even more trees than there already are, but uh, during like different hurricanes and stuff and storms, a lot of them had to get cut down or they just fell down naturally. They are so old. Um, this is it up this here? Is it, yeah. That's Mountainside, so it's just another town. Okay. But it's literally like on a hill. Um, there's some houses up there, just a cool view. Yeah. yeah this is nice. <laughs> is this your favorite hole? Nick? Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is so far my favorite, number 11. Yeah. Par five. Would have been nice to get par, but. I wonder if it's the same logo. I guess um, it has to be, right? What do you mean? Did they change the logo at they all? They did, they did. So it used to have a crest and it said ELCC, I believe Country Club. Yeah, so the logo used to be that, but it was blue and white. Interesting. Yeah. Looking here though. What is that? What? Practice? Oh, so that, um... Replacing the greens, right? Yeah. Say thanks again to Nick getting me out there and playing this exclusive, really private facility. Very grateful to learn about the history behind it as I went through the course and also some of the fun facts about the course. The big takeaway is the multiple golf designers. Donald Ross is the highlighting designer, and arguably the most holes are built by him. But on their website, you know, there's some interesting history there. I love the back nine a little bit more. It was so challenging though. It got almost overwhelming with 200 yard par threes and the par fours over 400 and maybe 50 yards it looked like. 458, 425. Hardest hole on the course was number six. I think Nick had way more pars than me, but at least I got a par on that hole. Solidifying myself here in golf history because the course itself has such a rich history. Celebrities, golf historians, golf professionals playing the course, and then hopefully we can get out, learn more about facilities like this in the near future. And I'll tell you what, it says it all right here with a big walk-off putt. Thanks again, Nick, for getting us out here and showing a little bit of this historical course. That's going to do it for our episode. Keep a lookout for more videos. This is The Parfessor. Thanks for putting up with me. <laughs> I think I saw that on 18 lit and I thought that was neat.